Hello! In the last video about transformers that integrated vision and language, we spoke about the pre-trainception, or this is how we like to call the many stages of pre-training that a transformer undergoes. In this video, we will give more details about the pre-training strategies that are usually employed for transformers like BERT. And we will handle language-only transformers and BERT-based transformers integrating vision and language. We will start with the transformers that process only language with the first strategy, masked language modeling. Usual language models that came before BERT predicted words from left to right, so their context was based only on what was written on the left. But BERT, where B stands for bidirectional, can look into both directions by being tasked to predict one masked token while, very important, being allowed to see the whole sentence. This is what is called masked language modeling. And by following this procedure, the word vectors are contextual, they are dynamically computed in a sentence looking at both left and right context. This makes natural language processing with BERT so powerful, because these dynamic word vectors carry a lot of information from the context, being able to disambiguate words. This makes natural language processing with BERT so powerful, because these dynamic word vectors carry a lot of information from the context, so they are able to disambiguate words very well and capture coreference, for example. Now you are certainly curious how we choose what words or tokens to mask and which not to mask. Well, there is no complicated mechanism on this part, it's just randomness. Because 15% of the tokens are chosen randomly and then masked and predicted. And these tokens chosen for masking are completely replaced by a special mask token, in order to prevent training a cheating model that would look at the word we try to mask. But this mask token appears only during the masked language modeling stage and not on a downstream task like on question answering. So what do we do in this case? To ameliorate this mismatch, at the pre-training stage, out of these 15% of tokens that are chosen to be predicted, only 80% of them are replaced with the mask token and the rest 20% is replaced by another random word that most probably does not make sense, like in this example where recognize a person was replaced by shout a person. But because we have this random token inserted, which makes no sense, means that our model sees also occasionally noise encouraging birds to be less biased towards the mask token when looking at the whole context. Okay, so that was it, what we need to know about the inner workings of masked language modeling. Yay! And we are ready to move on to the next pre-training strategy, which is next sentence prediction. How the name already describes it, the model has to predict if a given sentence is a good continuation of the sentence it is currently looking at. Let's break it down a little. We have the sentence that the model is currently looking at. And in this task, it is also getting a new sentence, a possible next sentence to the current one. In 50% of the cases, it is really the next sentence. But in other 50% of the cases, it is a random sentence. This training procedure teaches the model something about coherence and long-range dependencies that are spanning between sentences. And that was it for the model's learning from only language. What if we learn from images too? This is where it gets really cool. For vision and language, transformers are also trained on masked language modeling, but additionally on three other tasks, which make a lot of sense. The first task is sentence image alignment, where the multimodal transformer gets an image and a sentence and has to decide if this sentence is a suitable description of the image and predicts an alignment score. It receives both positive and negative examples to learn also by counterexample how the two modalities, vision and language, align. 
it's not so complicated, right? So we can move on to the fourth pre-training strategy employed by the multimodal transformer, which is region classification. This one's really intuitive. We remember, as we explained in the multimodal transformer video linked below, how the transformer works on sequences and also sequentializes the image by looking at the regions in the image and encoding them with a deep network from computer vision. Well, like we mask words from the textual sequence, we can also mask the image region and their features and try to predict what the masked region is. This training strategy helps the model focus also on the visual details, which is a very important contribution given that, anecdotally, the textual modality often overshadows the visual one. What I mean to say is that often models understand what a task is about, but looking only at the text without having any utility from looking at the image. This is one reason more to train by this strategy to classify image regions. And we are already at the last strategy, which takes the region classification from before to the next level, which is regression. Instead for the model to say what the masked image region is, it has to be even more detailed by specifying the feature vector describing this image. Of course, this task is much harder to solve. Classifications are easy, since the output space is very restricted and predefined. Regressions, however, are harder with a big and continuous output space. So this is it. Here we end our pre-trainception journey. To put it into perspective, the BERT models usually go through a pre-training stage where the strategies we just discussed, masked language modeling, next sentence prediction, are applied. For a multimodal transformer that integrates vision and language, additionally to the pre-training tasks we had already, we also take sentence image alignment, region classification and region feature regression into account. Then this model that has learned general features on text and possibly on images is ready to be applied on another, more interesting downstream task like sentiment classification, coreference resolution, machine translation and so on. And because the model was pre-trained in stage 1, the performance on the downstream task at stage 2 benefits considerably. I hope you have learned something about the training procedure of transformers. If you like this video, do not forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. <laughs> See you next time. Mm -hmm.